Hello, I'm Christian Seraphim. I manage a team in NVIDIA that focuses on GPU support and PyTorch. Today, I'm going to talk to you about one of our internal partners, our deep learning benchmarking team. This team is one of the largest users of PyTorch, and that's because they use our internal supercomputer, Selene. The supercomputer is one of the most powerful in the world, and this is what they use when they work on deep learning benchmarking. So primarily, they focus on MLPerf. MLPerf is comprised of eight different networks that have been selected by a committee that is representative of the networks that are being run in the community. And one of the goals of this benchmarking is to run these networks as fast as possible. And to that extent, our team has trained BERT in under 50 seconds using 2048 A100 GPUs. And this, of course, pushes the hardware, software, and large batch training to its limits. Of the eight benchmarks that are in MLPerf, five of them are performed in PyTorch. And this might surprise some people as PyTorch is typically known as a deep learning research framework because of its ease of prototyping new network architectures. However, its strong out-of-the-box performance, along with a tech ability that extends far below the surface of the Python front end, makes it an ideal framework to use to prototype advanced optimizations for these networks and submit them for our benchmarking. Our submissions can run anywhere from eight GPUs on a network all the way up to 2,048 GPUs on a network. And not all networks are run at a maximum of 2,048 GPUs. And there's two primary reasons for this. So one is that as you keep increasing the number of GPUs on a network, you're gonna get diminishing performance benefits from it. So scaling from eight GPUs up to 16 GPUs, you're going to get a much larger relative performance gain than when you scale from 512 GPUs up to 1024 GPUs. The other factor is as we keep using more GPUs, our global batch size gets larger and larger. And what happens is it becomes more and more difficult to converge the network with those very large batch sizes to the target accuracy. And so you might actually be running more iterations. And even though each of those iterations are faster using more GPUs, you start to eat away into some of the performance gains by using so many GPUs. These networks in our ML submission are full of different optimizations. And a lot of these optimizations are already available in PyTorch today. So some of those are distributed data parallel, which helps users use multiple GPUs to train a network. Mixed precision training, which allows users to take advantage of the tensor core hardware in our GPUs for fast convolutions and gems. Channels last format, which also helps performance of two-dimensional convolutions. Group batch normalizations, which allow users to use a small batch size per GPU and normalize across multiple GPUs that have high throughput co connectivity between them. Tuned collective communication through our library, Nickel, and synchronization-free training. Some optimizations, though, are either a lot trickier to use for the average user, or they are really specific to specialized scenarios. So one example is our fused multi-headed attention operator, which is an apex. This operator is extraordinarily fast, but it's only one variant of attention, and it's not used in many networks. It's primarily used in BERT. And so an operator like that or optimization strategies that are more challenging for users, it's, it's a little bit questionable on if we want to push those directly upstream as opposed to working on some of the more generic optimizations and making them more accessible like mixed precision training. And even though we're able to scale, scale all the way up to 2,000 GPUs, there's still some challenges that we have. So one of these is slow non-GPU work. And in an eager mode framework like PyTorch, we have to figure out, given a user front end expression um, or operator, we have to figure out how to run that operator. We have to figure out what to run on the GPU, figure out how to run it on the GPU. And that translation is usually very quick However, when you start to scale up, or if you have a network that has a lot of small operations, the amount of time it takes to figure out what and how to do something can take as long, if not longer, than actually doing it. The other thing is, as we scale up to a large number of GPUs, we get to the point where we're running one sample per GPU per iteration. And in order to scale any further, what we would need to do 
is run that sample on multiple GPUs through the network. And we would typically refer to this as a model parallel paradigm. And we don't have a lot of utilities today to be able to do that. And one of the things that we're looking at is to try to figure out what kind of utilities we might be able to provide users to take advantage of a model parallel architecture in their networks. And lastly, these optimizations are tricky to implement into users' networks. And it does take some specialized knowledge to be able to do it successfully. But one thing that we can do is provide automated tooling or automated optimizations so that users don't have to work too hard to get these optimizations in their network. We can lower the barrier and we can reach a lot more users so that they take better advantage of their GPUs. And one example of this, of course, is automatic mixed precision that we have in upstream PyTorch, as well as the channel's last support, which is pretty easy to integrate into people's networks. But this is exactly why we have a PyTorch team at NVIDIA. We're dedicated to the GPU experience in PyTorch overall, and we want all of our users to have not only a good experience, but be able to run performant networks on their GPUs. We have a lot of different customers. It can be the PyTorch community, which we interact with frequently on GitHub and on the forums, our internal NVIDIA users, like the ones that we're talking about in this presentation, as well as enterprise partners that we work closely with frequently. And one of the big responsibilities that we have in this team is when we work with a team like our DL benchmarking team, we review the optimizations that they put in to their networks to make them run as fast as they do. We figure out how much performance they gain from these different op optimizations. And we also review how we think that we could make these optimizations more accessible and figure out how general we can make them so that we get an idea of how many users we might be able to reach. And then we will go ahead and we'll figure out what kind of interface we want for our users. We'll go ahead and implement it top to bottom. Um, of course, working closely with the PyTorch community uh, and we'll be responsible for those features. So again, an example of this is automatic mixed precision. Another thing that we do spend a lot of time on is maintaining the performance of current PyTorch operators. So making sure that they stay fast on the GPU, as well as improving the performance of some of them. There's always gonna be some scenarios where an operator could be faster and we work hard to make sure that we improve the performance of them. And lastly is of course, implementing new operators when there's requests for it consistently from the community and they need a GPU implementation. So some features that you guys can look forward to in the coming year are gonna be CUDA graph integration. So CUDA graph is gonna help us with that non-GPU overhead. And the way that it does that is CUDA is going to record what operations were performed on the GPU and how they were performed on the GPU. And then it's gonna be able to replay that without the overhead of PyTorch dispatch system or the overhead of CPU dispatches, at least a reduced overhead from them. Now, the initial prototype is likely going to be an extension. It won't be directly upstream in PyTorch, but you can keep an eye out for it. And it's going to be initially only working with networks that have input tensor sizes that are consistent across iteration to iteration. So if you have dynamic tensor sizes going through your network, it won't be applicable to you right away. The other thing is we're going to continue improving our channel's last format. So today it works really well with two-dimensional tensors, and we're going to extend that out to one-dimensional and three-dimensional tensors. And lastly, we're collaborating very closely with the PyTorch JIT team at Facebook to bring automated code generation for NVIDIA GPUs directly into PyTorch. And what that's going to do is it's going to enable advanced operation fusion in PyTorch, giving performance benefits like other deep learning compilers do. So thank you very much for listening to this talk, for being part of the PyTorch community, and hopefully we'll see you again next year at PyTorch Developer Day.